guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, the video that I made earlier today about uh, little Glenda Merle's ear infections, um, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things um, because I've had a, a few comments and uh, some questions about it. But um, okay, in the video I stated that it was the cigarette smoking that caused my ear infections. It wasn't the cigarette smoking that caused the ear infection. It was the fact that little Glenda Merle was allergic to the cigarette smoke. Now, some someone wanted to know why did I have in the ear infections and no one else in my family had them. That's because I was the only one that had developed allergies to the cigarette smoke. Um, just like some people are allergic to, um, to pollen and different things in the air. Some people are allergic to, you know, poison ivy. Um, you know, people are allergic to different things, whereas others are not. So what happened with me breathing the cigarette smoke, it caused the eustachian tube to swell. And because it was so swollen, then the normal fluid in my ear could not drain down the eustachian tube. So therefore, the fluid backed up behind my ear, in my middle ear, and uh, that's what caused the infection. Um, even today, um, you know, if I go into someone's home who's smoking, um, my ear will start, you know, throbbing, and I, I can just feel it. It's just like immediate. You know, I'm, I'm very allergic to cigarette smoke. So that's why little Glenda Merle had um, the ear infections, and, and my brother and my sisters and my mother and father did not. But anyway, um... Now, I did not do anything about the doctor in Galveston who butchered my eardrum with that spike that he drove in there. Um, the hour that he went out of the examining room, I think he was in there reading his Merck manual or something to try to figure out, you know, what to do about this. Um, you know, I was sick. I, I just wanted to get some relief, and I, I did not even think about bringing a lawsuit against him that that was the least thing from my mind so that's that's total that was totally out of the question um also as you know i guess when i was about 21 um a after my eardrum did heal and everything and, and i did get another infection um by then we had moved back to mississippi so um i started seeing an ear specialist there and, and this was like in 1974 so um in 1954, a female doctor by the name of Dr. Beverly Armstrong, who was a practicing um, ear specialist in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, uh, she had developed a little tiny, tiny, tiny tube, and they're called the pressure equalization tubes, uh, better known today as PE tubes. And uh, I think the procedure is called, oh, let me see, I wrote it down. A temp, uh, myringotomy with the tympano, tympanostomy tube. Uh, it's a very common procedure nowadays Nowadays for children who have ear infections. Um, you know, they the uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors will insert the little tube in their eardrum. Um, but anyway, when I was about 23, I guess, by the time we had moved back to Mississippi and uh, this new procedure was well established, um, I did get the the PE tube in my left eardrum, and that was just, it was like a miracle. So thank God for this female doctor who invented this, um, the PE tubes, and, you know, thousands and thousands of them are in use today. So I just wanted to clarify that, and thank you for being concerned, and thank you so much for leaving me the questions and making me uh, delve into this a little bit deeper. And y'all just keep on coming back. Bye now.